Uh, Ambassador Sibyl, if I could begin with you. You know, you've put out a very interesting reaction to the fact that the BBC documentary has referred to a UK government report. And you've called it a slanted report. What did you mean by that, sir? Well, you know, when I, after I took over, uh, the British High Commission, uh, High Commission uh, sent uh, one of their officers, and I think it was the first secretary, I don't clearly recall, uh, to do an investigation on the spot uh, of what happened during these riots. Um, and then uh, they circulated their findings, their report, uh, to the EU heads of missions. And one of the EU ambassadors close to us, uh, he informed me of this. It was a very negative report, obviously. Um, so I, I took, a, took the step uh, to issue, uh, if you like, uh, a kind of a warning uh, to the uh, EU heads of missions and, and, the, and the diplomatic corps in general uh, not to interfere in uh, internal affairs. This was totally uncalled for, uh, for the uh, British High Commission to take upon itself the responsibility to conduct an investigation you know, on the spot uh, on an issue which was uh, very, very sensitive and try to mold the, the opinion of the European heads of missions in this regard. Um, and I had another occasion when I had uh, a luncheon meeting with the EU heads of mission uh, in uh, Delhi. Uh, I again, uh, at the end of my, it was on India-EU relations in general, and at the end of it, I again uh, cautioned them uh, about uh, not interfering in our internal affairs and making judgments on this issue when it was uh, quite clear that uh, uh, all the uh, inquiries that needed to be done uh, uh, were, being, were being done, and the issue was being uh, discussed uh, by our own uh, people yeah. in the press and elsewhere. So there was no need uh, for a foreign... Ambassador Shibal, if I may, are they allowed to do so? Are diplomats permitted to carry out an investigation uh, and submit reports? Well, you know, uh, you can't stop a, 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 anybody from any embassy to visit any part of India, even if uh, there are problems in that area, because we are a democratic country, we don't stop them. But what really uh, the missions normally do is not to put themselves out in this manner where the host government can view what they do very negatively. Now, I can understand the situation if uh, some uh, British nationals uh, or the British community in India True. was, uh, in a sense, being targeted and there was legit legitimate concern to find out what had happened. But this was purely an internal affair. And then, you know, 20 years after that, uh, to make a documentary and quote Jack Straw uh, in this regard, obviously Jack Straw didn't come here physically to inspect anything. They were dependent on the reports uh, from, that they received from the High Commission here. Uh, but, you know, the fact that they have done this uh, documentary 20 years after the event shows that uh, they feel somehow that they must get into uh, these issues here. Uh, because of uh, various things, uh, domestic pressures, their own very large uh, Pakistani origin population and Muslim community. Uh, yeah. And also, uh, you know, they have always taken a very, uh, how should I say, protective view uh, of Pakistan. And today, you can see the Economist and Independent and other British, British media are very anti modi very anti-RSS. And they are raising this issue constantly about uh, the minorities in India, uh, being uh, threatened in You know, you've raised, Ambassador Sibyl, some very valid points about whether this is truly an impartial documentary. But the question that I have, sir, following up with what Gaurav also asked you, is the locus standi here and the clear malified intent. But I want to understand from you, sir, because it's been 20 years. Has this report ever been spoken of before? No, you see, this is, this is, uh, this is a on-the-spot sort of a report that... Uh, a foreign diplomat goes and then sends it to his own government and then circulates it within the EU. Uh, mm -hmm. In terms of pure uh, diplomatic, uh, uh, how these things are done, uh, it is, it is nothing unusual. I've seen myself in Russia, uh, where when there are some so-called human rights issues locally, I found Western ambassadors actually uh, being very visible in terms of showing their commitment uh, on this issue, and if a human rights activist uh, has been killed or whatever else, and there is a funeral 
that's going to be held, they, many of them go and attend that, knowing that the local government would look upon this very negatively. But you do this when you have, don't have friendly inclinations towards the government, uh, as is the case between UK and the European Union and Russia, okay. which is much more pronounced today. But India being a friendly country, and given the sensitivities of the past, uh, for them to play this kind of a game and try and uh, expose more the fishers and in, in India and try to profit from them and yeah. create a narrative internationally uh, against the present government, this is, this is simply not in consonance with the kind of relations that we want to build and that 30 year and the, and the roadmap that we have built till 2030 and the FTA and other things that we intend to sign. The British press is very negative. It is very harmful. True in terms of uh, what is doing to our relationship and creating misunderstandings. And I and think, think the government also, uh, Ambassador Sibyl, has sent out a very, very strong statement right now, at least publicly saying that this is quite clearly propaganda.